Welcome viewers to another episode of Land Power TV. Today we are in a rather chilly Yorkshire at the Yorkshire Agricultural Machinery Show, which is otherwise known as YAMS. Now to kick things off today, we are on the Class Eastern stand and I am talking with Darren Coates, who is the Field Sales Manager for Class Eastern. Darren, you've been with Class since 2006. This year, they're celebrating 20 years since they purchased Renault Agriculture. Tell us a little bit about what the main changes have been in the tractors since you've been with the company. So yeah, the, the, um, obviously 20 years of development has gone into that tractor. Um, and to be honest with you now, the Renault side of it is completely gone. Gone, yeah. Okay, um, everything from the design of the tractor, the build of it, and the factory. The, everything's had massive, massive input into it in terms of uh, development of the factory, making it more efficient, pay, better paint plants, All better right. model mixes, everything like that. So massive development's gone into it and yeah, we're proud enough now to say that we've got a fantastic range of product and it's growing all the time. It's growing all the time. Now, so we've got significantly greater horsepower range, correct? Yep, yep. So we start right down at your, at your, your you know, your 60 horsepower yep. and go right up to 525 horsepower. Exactly. So now then, when we're talking about t the class tractors, what are some of the developments that we've seen in terms of changes? What are you seeing in terms of trends these days? What are you pushing towards with farmers so, buying? Yeah, as everybody knows, the, um, the horsepower of a general tractor now is growing all the time. All the time. Time, yeah. uh, and your average horsepower is now well into the 200 horsepower bracket. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah, the uh, obviously the tractor we stood next to, uh, the Axion here, is probably now becoming one of our mainstream machines. All right. Um, and as obviously technology moves on, we move into C-matic or what is our Vario transmission, C-matic transmission, which is obviously interval variable speed. Um, and and that, that's the way forward now. We've obviously got um, uh, what we call CMOS on tractors as well, which is a the technology, a, a technology yeah, integrated yeah. system that optimizes that tractor, optimizes how it works, optimizes its fuel economy and everything like that, and gets the absolute efficiency out of that machine. Other developments within the class, we know that uh, 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 Saxon, they've recently finished now the developing the new the new building, the new class headquarters in the United Kingdom. There's been some changes there. What's been going on there? What have they done to that facility in yeah, the last so 12 months? So obviously a multi-million pound development's gone on there, completely flattened the site and started from scratch. Um, Class Mans, which was the original class importer, yeah, yeah. obviously have got their new park, new workshops, and now we've got a techno park, uh, which is a proper indoor technical park where we can get combines, tractors, really? forklifts, everything inside. Um, people can go down, see the machines, we can take customers, there's meeting rooms and the last thing that's just been opened and this uh, launched this year is what we call our experience centre. Right. Uh, and the experience centre is basically um, a test track that customers can take a tractor, the model maybe they're looking at to buy, take it around the test track, drive it. We've got some clamps there, we can put the forklifts in it, the Torian range, get them on the clamps, get them on the rubber, on the sand, try them out. Uh, and then in the middle of that, we've got a, a big sand pit basically. Right. And we can take the tractors in there with the GPS and the telematics and everything and show people how it all works. Right, and is that actually operational now? Yeah, it's operational now. Actually today, we've got a, a group of customers down there today, uh, actually in the tractors, on the test track, uh, having their experience. Oh, that's absolutely cool. Now then, on, just on a final note, um, this year, what, how, what do you think the forecast is for this year? Changes in the industry, is it going to be a good year? You know, how are you feeling about this coming month? This coming we, we've started off very, very well. Right. There's a lot of positivity out there um, and we've started really well. But there is changes to come. I think them changes are probably going to have a little bit of effect. Right. Don't get me wrong, it's like everything. But yeah, let's... One thing with farmers, they will invest and they will strive to do better. Uh, and obviously doing that is in machinery. So, yeah, it's looking good at the moment. Good. But everything can change. Positive news here then, folks. Darren, thank you very thank much you. for your very time. Have problem. a good show. We will. And we'll see you again. Thank you very much. Right, ladies and gents, so following on from our customer review of this Abbey Mac front mounted twin rotor rake that we did last year, I'm now with the man himself, Mr. Simon Smith, who actually <laughs> imports these machines did, into did. the UK. So, Simon, first of all, how's it doing? 
We're doing all right, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're doing very, very well. Good stuff. So last, uh, well, when I spoke to the guy who run this very machine, actually, Indeed, he was yeah. absolutely chuffed to bits with it. Yep. How are these machines going for you? What's the sort of popularity? Who's buying them? Who are they suiting? That kind of thing. They tend to suit the sort of owner-operator type people that are trying to save. They're the guys with the eyes on the pounds, basically. Yeah. The guys with the eyes on the pounds are realising the money they can save by running one of our machines and the time and the aggravation and the hassle that they can take out the job because they can just control what they're doing themselves. Doing everything in-house, goes to the field, does the job. In general, when we get our usual English silage time where it rains every few hours, yeah. rake man's rake 50 acre up in front of him and it's then rain, doesn't it? Well, That's it. If it rains when he's in with this, the bit that gets wet is the bit under the tractor and that's well that's, that's it, it exactly and then vice versa as well you know the, yeah. the baler well the guy with the baler and this he's not waiting for the rake man correct to uh, catch up yeah uh, so how long have you been importing uh, the abbey mac machines now we started in well we've been doing it five years five years now yeah because right. flashed upon facebook memories so yeah that's it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like flipping out what happened there <laughs> yeah. we've still been doing it so yeah now we've got, uh, we've been doing it five years, we've got, uh, in the UK there's about 30 machines. Yeah. Worldwide there's over about 150. Right. So, so there's a few out there. We're then. gaining traction. Yeah. We're gaining traction. I'm right in thinking these are, these are Italian built, are they? They're built in Italy, yeah. Right. Um, a lot of the design is modified by us because we conjoined the two designs of my design and their design. Right. So it's, it's a bit of our design on, onto their design as well, so we've yeah. beefed it all up for the UK market. Um, the roller design is ours, and that's a modification. Um, yeah, heavier duty than what it would have been. Yeah. With a few added tweaks of the impact protection and just a few, you know, using a machine, you know what it needs, if you see, it, see what I mean. You that's know, it. We use them ourselves, so we know what a machine needs, rather yeah. than we aren't just a seller of them, We build them, design them, and then sell them, if you see. Use them, develop them. Develop them, yeah. It, yeah. Right, Customer so. feedback and all the rest of it. So, you say you use them. Where did you sort of first see these then? <coughs> what, what's, uh... Good old YouTube. Good old YouTube. Good old YouTube, yeah. Yeah, yeah I found, I found, we built the machine ourselves and ran it, and it was only a six metre machine. It was a Pottinger that we modified to run backwards, basically. Oh, right. But it wasn't big enough. Yeah. And then I found these guys making their machine, but it wasn't heavy enough. Right. So a little trip to Italy and a bit of head scratching and Google Translate for a few days. And yeah. Here's the here's the finished article. And that's it. And it's just a case of and I suppose it's evolved ever so slightly yeah. ever since. Like working out what you can do with it. Yes. And what size models are you offering, or how many models are you offering these days? We've well, there used to be three models in the range, but we've dropped the this baby one because the small, the middle one would do what the baby one would do and it has more tine arms per rotor. Right. So we've got the 6811, which is 6.8 metres to 11 tine arms, and then this is the big one, 7.8 metres, 13 tine arms. Right. So you've got more tines, cleaner sweep. And in terms of, like, the hydraulic requirements and everything else for it, what do you need to run this? You need 15, 15, 20, 15 to 20 litres, that's all. That's it. And the only thing that you must have is a free flow return so that is, there's no pressure yeah. going back. That's it. That's the only only requisite of our machines is a free flow return. And then presumably hydraulic service for raising lower and lowering. Yeah, that's just a single acting spool that lifts and then goes into dump to lower it down. So you right. need three hydraulic pipes basically. Jobs are done. So well, fairly easy. That's it, yeah, well it looked easy when we were <laughs> filming it last year, so exactly, yeah, all yeah. good stuff. Um, yeah, Sam, thank you very much and for you. your time. And you. Have a good show. Well, hopefully. <laughs> <Spot on. laughs> See you later. So viewers, as we continue our journey around the exhibits at Yams, we have found ourselves on the Russell's stand. Now, joining me from Russell's is, is the wonderful Britt Whitworth, who is working for Russell's now as a territory sales representative in Yorkshire. Now, but you've not long been, long been with Russell's, have you? No, so I 
started with Russell's at the beginning of January. Um, before I worked for Russell's, I worked in fleet sales and on a dairy farm. So I'm really excited for the new chapter with Russell's and to start selling some tractors. Good, good. I'm pleased to hear that. Now, there's a bit more to you than meets the eye, isn't there? Because <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, you run an Instagram site, don't you? Tell us a little bit I about do. that. So I um, do a little bit of influencing on the side. It's obviously not my full-time job, but I do enjoy doing it. I work with Holland Cooper Clothing, promoting their products but my main goal with my Instagram is to promote women in agriculture as it's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, I want girls to believe that there is no reason they can't do the job just like the boys can. Obviously there's been a little bit of stigma in the past about it's not really a woman's place in agriculture but one by one I'd like to change that stereotype. So we are now standing in front we of the are, new T5S yep. tractor which you're going to tell me a little bit about because the T5 has yep. been around a little while. It has. What is it that has makes this particular tractor different from the last one? So this particular tractor now comes in five different models ranging from 80 to 117 horsepower. Right. They offer the uh, power shuttle option and they offer the mechanical option so you've got different horsepowers, different gearboxes in it. Right. It did actually become a finalist in Tractor of the Year 2023. Really? So it is a brilliant compact tractor um, with a variety of different users, very good in sort of your livestock market. Um, on it, it features the same sort of bonnet that's on the T6 and T7, right. so it's just updated and upgraded it a little bit. So, so it's, 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 it's inheriting some of the design mm -hmm. features of the larger models it now? It is, yes. What about in terms of cab, any improvements there? So any, you've got the Vision View cab. Um, as you can see on this tractor, you've got a lot better range of vision, so if you're in and out of sheds or if you're having a load on and you're loading things, um, you've just got better visibility in the tractor. All the way um, around, And a yeah. few upgrades within the, in the cab just to make it a bit more refined. Right, and obviously this is aimed for your mid-size and stock farmers. It is, it yes. Is. Nice little compact tractor, another addition. Now, the other news within the new Holland Rangers here, and you haven't got one, is the T7 300. Yes. Now, you've dealt with that a little bit, I understand. Tell us yep. a little bit about where that fits in. So that is trying to push, obviously, the future upgrades on the tractors, so a lot more equipment within to make your precision land management a lot better. Um, right. So it features the upgraded screen on the steering wheel, which centres as you turn the steering wheel so it doesn't move with it right, yeah. um, but it's just an upgrade on the T7 to, to get that precision land management where it needs to be well, I just want to say thank you so yes. very much for talking to me. It's been an absolute pleasure Lovely to, to me, meet yeah. you. I wish you all the best thank of success you very from much. Russells. You saw it here, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to come and buy New Holland up here in Yorkshire from Russells. <laughs>
that you know the guys that come into silage the maize off the they all say how the trailers travel a lot better on the soil. I say because you got the so you got something to actually bite into. Correct, you? correct, yeah. yeah. You don't get the mud on the road, which has been a big factor for the last few years. And then, you know, the people say February when we can start slurry spreading, because we had that cover, we could get a good dose of slurry on in February uh, because it wouldn't, you know, the grass held it yeah. uh, and soaked it up. For the boys that spread a lot of um, digestate, um, if you have a growing crop, you can put up to something like 45 cube a season on. All right. You, you know, you have an excuse to spread it if it's, there's a growing crop there. Yeah. Rather than just on bare exactly, soil. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of factors. Plus, you know, sheep grazing at spring, cattle grazing. There's a lot of. Fairly adds up, doesn't it? It does. It yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It does make a lot of sense. But the beauty is, you have a wide working window. We can start when the maize is maybe. I was going to say because at what point do you go in with this? Because like you. you because uh, there's a lot of trials gone on, aren't there? There are so lot. When to yes. actually put the the grass, yeah, you know, planted in between the maize. Do you do it with the maize as it's going in? There's arguments for and against that. Correct. But this is actually later on in the stage. Yeah. Isn't it? So at what point do you start putting it in? Um, I think best four to six leaves. Mm. Uh, that's the best. The machine was designed so it would go through maize as high as that beam. Right. You know, there's 800. 50 millimetres clearance yeah. under there, so when maize is nearly up to your belt, you can still go through it and put the seed in. Right. Uh, there was talk of put it in later so it doesn't compete with your crop, but we've learned to go a little bit earlier so the grass gets established. Gets going, yeah. But, but once the maize canopy closes up, the grass stops growing because the, the light can't get to the grass. Right. So get it in when the rows are open so the grass gets so big. The maize rows cover in, and it just sort of stays, it, it stays static, there. Right. You get your maize cut in October, November, and the grass just takes off. Job's gone. Well, Paul, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Spot for the on that. Me. Good to see one of these around as well. Yeah, 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 Good stuff. yeah. No, we've, we've uh, a dozen of them out. So mainly, you know, southwest, and yeah. west of England. Sound. So most of you will know that Grimmy is a market leader in root crop and vegetable harvesting. Now this year Grimmy UK is celebrating 30 years of trading in Britain, which is quite remarkable when you consider what they've achieved during that time. Now the latest model to join the Grimmy lineup or portfolio if you want to say it, is the Select 200 behind it, which is a replacement for the very popular GT170 harvester. Here to tell us all about it is Grimmy UK's marketing manager for the UK and Ireland, Adam Johnson. Adam, explain to us what's new about this machine. Well, first of all, hello everyone. So what we've got here is the Select 200. Obviously, as Simon said, this replaces the popular GT170, which was the most popular trail root crop harvester in the UK. One of the main things on the Select 200 is the new camera system that we've got. This is called Smart View. This is a painted in system specifically designed by Grimmer that you can pause, rewind, record, and also log in through an iPad system. So if a customer wants to be able to see what's going on with their machine in the field, they can actually log in through an iPad and see live what's going on with the separators, with the webs, with the picking off table. So the farmer or the warehouse manager can be watching this machine watching in the field exactly and going, hang on, we've got a there. problem here. Yep. What's exactly. going on? Have you got this? Set? Oh my goodness! That's, so yeah, that's so awesome. it's a painting system by Grimmer, and it's the first one that we've introduced to a trailed harvester. So yeah, right, that's unbelievable. Brilliant. So what else have we got so here? Then? Also, we've got Vario Drive. So Vario Drive is a new web drive system that we've created, it's basically to reduce the amount of horsepower that, that's required. Because with these machines, you start getting more and more horsepower. You're getting into the 200, 200 horsepower range, basically. Yeah. What we've done with Vario Drive. We've made it so it's a lot easier for the Webster drive. We've made it infinitely adjustable, so you can adjust it from in the cab really easy because obviously different weathers, different soil conditions, depending, you need to be able to adjust those web speeds to get your crop flow right. Yep, you can also reverse these webs now for the first time, right. so that makes it a lot easier. So if you get a blockage, say you've got a bit of foreign object in there, you need to be able to clear that out, you can now reverse that for the first time. So that's a, that's a key thing to this machine. It's going to make it a lot easier to operate for the operators. Obviously, one of the key things now is 
travelling as well, making sure road transport widths are within legal limits because obviously when you're travelling down the road, somebody's coming over the way, you don't want that wheel sticking out as you're travelling no, down the road. No, and that's a liability. That's a liability. Exactly. So, so now the axle is hydraulically slideable, so you can move this axle in for road transport, but when you get to the field, you can then move it out for field work. Well, so how far does it, it will actually extend out? So it's like a bit, nearly another metre, roughly, roughly, really? yeah. So um, and basically you've got and basically how does how it's been designed is it works with the auto leveling system as well so you've got another hydraulic ram here okay. so as it pulls out you don't have any um, less use of the auto leveling system at the same time so it's it's basically made it a lot safer on the road but obviously it makes it a lot more stable in the field as well really? so you've got a lot more consistency when you're harvesting across the field so that's one of one of the key things that we've got another thing this year we've redesigned the multi set i don't know if you can see in there or not but one of the things that we've had feedback from from the GT170 was that it was a bit of a pain to get the, the segments out. It's, it's quite hard to drop them out. It's, it wasn't a two second job. So what we've done is we've redesigned the complete multi -step. So now, if you want to get any of these shafts out, it's a couple of minute job. A couple of bolts out, these in, shafts Individually? Are, individually. So if, say if you've got, uh, you've had a foreign object in there and you've had a segment that's damaged or you've got maybe a P-roll that's been damaged at the same time, right. you, we can drop these out in no time at all now. Whereas before, you'd be looking at a few hour job to be able to do that. Pain in the yeah, so we've made it a lot easier for the operators. Another thing as well is we've changed the angle of the multi-set. So we've made it a lot, a lot steeper. So if you want to get that crop flow over there, you can get a lot higher crop flow through this machine now, make it a lot more easy for the operator. Another thing for the Select 200 is the telematics unit. So there's a telematics unit for the first time. We've never done this on trailed harvesters. Okay. This, this, this was introduced on our sugar beet harvesters and our self patel potato harvesters, but we've never had it on a trailed harvester up until this point and the good thing about the telematics unit you can log into uh, MyGrimmer online free of charge it's not a, not something that we charge for and you can see exactly what this machine is doing through the telematics unit so you can see how fast the speeds go how fast the web speeds are going what the multi set up where the machine is and you could say for example um, if you wanted from a safety point of view you could point a geofence around the machine on a night right. and then if this machine moves out of the geofence MyGrimmer will alert you that this machine's going down the road to say it's been stolen basically. So basically you're taking this is Veriotron yep, ver technology. Veriotron technology. That you've now put into the trail machines. Now into the trail machines for the first time. So these that. really are now so these, high spec. These are the pinnacle With now. the cameras yep, and, yep. And, and that, that new technology there. Yep. So what else, is there anything else that's a so little bit the, new about this the machine? Other thing, the other thing yeah. really is mainly just the, the picking off table. We've designed it so it's a little bit more space now. Right. So we've given the obviously one of the main things here is when these guys are up here picking every day they just need a little bit more room to be able to do what they need to do because before it was a little bit cramped there was like the you, you may be like half the size before right. so we've given the picking off table a little bit more room to be able to do the job that they need to do so it's a bit more comfortable for them as well and yeah they're probably the main points i would point out on the select 200 for this year there you have it the Select 200 replacement for the very popular GT170. Thank you so much no, for showing us around that. Thank you, it's Simon. good to see you. Yeah. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you later in the year. Yeah, no, it'll be in the field. So if you'd like a demo, just give us a shout and it'll be out there. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> yeah. Right, ladies and gents, continuing the spud theme, we are now on the British manufacturer that is Standen, and I'm now joined by Mr. Edward Gilbert, who is going to talk us through his latest product, which is this planter. So, I mean, Ed, give us a little whistle-stop tour of this. Okay, so this is the new uh, Standen SR200 planter, currently in uh, two-row format. We are looking at a four-row offset model uh, for later this, this spring, and also a three-row uh, trailed machine. Right. Um, so the main new features of this planter, we wanted something that was um, uh, more accurate than a, than a belt planter. You know, we've been known for cut planters forever and a day. Yeah. But the downfall of the cut planter was it wouldn't handle large and, and irregular seed size. So this planter will plant any seed size, small, medium, large, long, anything. Right, and how have you managed to get around that challenge with the cup planter? So it's the design of the cup. So if you can see into the, into the cup here, um, it still has an insert in here. So this red insert is for medium seed. Um, we also have a grey insert, which is for much longer seed. And the way the planter works, it picks the seed up from, from the back uh, in this holding hopper at the back here. The, 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 the cups then come forwards 
and any doubles then fall down this chute here and go back into this hopper uh, ready to, to right. go be picked up again. But it, it's all to do with the, the, the cup design yeah. really. Um, and, and people, that we, we found people have gone to a belt planter and they've not been happy with the spacing. Mm. And you'll never be more accurate than a so cup planter. So they can handle They can handle the, the big C, the C but, but, but they'll be regularly yeah. spaced. And it's all about accuracy of input. So you've managed to combine best of both We've worlds with the this best machine, of both worlds. just simply by swapping those inserts? Si simply by doing that. Um, and the machine is, is controlled via a small touch screen. So in there you, you program in your seed spacing down the row or your population, your seed rate per hectare, and it, and it will work it out for you. Right. So it's very simple to set up. Yeah. And does this model replace any particular model? What would this one do? Yeah, so it replaces the SP200. Right. Um, so it replaces that. Um, uh, but we, we say we wanted to stay in, 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 the, in the cut planter line because that's what we're known for. But get that, uh, but get that ability to handle various sizes. Various seed sizes and also forward speed. We, we can maintain sort of up to 10 kilometres an hour with this planter. So it, it can be as quick as a belt planter on, on the right spacing. Right. So we've sort of got the best of both worlds, hopefully. And compared to this machine's predecessor, what have you changed anything else on this machine? If you want to give us a little so, quick so tour. The, so the chassis is... Um, so it's a different it's a different chassis. I mean, the whole thing is, is totally different to the SP range. This isn't just an update. No, no. It, it, the whole thing is, is totally different. Um, uh, we've got a bigger hopper. We've got some, some bigger wheels on there. And also uh, the hood is, is a major point. We've got a much longer shaping hood. Um, so at, at, at faster forward speeds, we needed to be able to, to maintain a ridge. Um, whereas the the SP planter above sort of six seven k, the ridge would fall apart. Yeah. But we've got a much longer hood now. It looks so, like so lots of old, adjustment older. on that hood as well. There's a lot of adjustment, yeah. and it also has its own um, hydraulic pressure system on the hood. So if the hood gets too much soil in and starts to billow over the top, the the, the hood will lift. Oh, it's like a relief. Um, so it's yes, it, right. exactly. And then if if we're short of soil, the the hood will come down. Yeah. And uh, how's it know that then? So it's a, it's a it's a pressure sensor on here that's that's in the that's in the system. So this pressure sensor oh, right. in here. So you've got an accumulator yeah. on there, it just it. monitors the pressure yeah. in that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Huh. Yeah. Clever stuff. And what capacity is this this new hopper? Uh, it'll hold a ton and a half, um, and there is a greedy board to go on the top as well if, if people wanted that. Um, so it's enough really for a, for a mounted planter. Yeah, that's it. Um, like I say, you've got the bigger ones coming. Well, we've got a, we've got a three row trail coming, um, three row and a bed trailed. Yeah. And I say we're building a four row offset trailed as well. Right. Uh, which is quite a monster that holds four ton of seed. Uh, big big machine. Getting on. Um, absolutely. <laughs> well, it's, people are going. We're, we're seeing people going to the four row harvester. Uh, Self-propelled harvester. Yeah. So they want if they're going to harvest in four rows, they want to be able to plant in four rows. Exactly. So yeah. It's all got a match on it, really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then finally, are these fully available to order now? These new fully models? available yeah. now, um, and we've got some demo machines as well. So we will be running two demonstrators. So if people would like a demonstration, we, we can organise that. Um, but yeah, we've got a few machines left for this season. If um, if people wanted one, good yes. stuff. Well, yeah. give us a shout when you're out. Yeah. We'd uh, hopefully yeah. come and have a look, see we what's will. going on. Yeah, see thank what you it's very like. much. Thank yeah. you. Job's we'll done. Well, Ed, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Spot on that. Thanks for your time. We couldn't possibly have come up to visit the Yam Show here in Yorkshire without visiting a Yorkshire based exhibitor. We are here now on the Rytec stand and the man that's going to tell me what's new today is Mark Harrison, who is the managing director and the founder of Rytec. Tell us about this machine behind us. So this is a progression of our Restorer range of low disturbance subsilos. Right. So the idea is it does everything that um, a plough would do right. without inverting the soil and bringing up all the rubbish from underneath. Right, okay. Uh, so it relieves all the compaction mm -hmm. and um, allows you to drill straight into it with very little extra working of the ground. So essentially then this is a, this, the, this trend for low disturbance subsoil is for working with direct drilling applications? Or, yeah, or direct or? drills but it also converts conventional drills and gives them the ability to be used as a direct drill because you can go straight into an unprepared field, straight into a stubble field, right. this in front of the conventional drill and it'll drill straight into the ground that this has left loose and behind. Right, okay. So this is the this is the newest one that you've got on the yeah, tell us so, a little bit about. So this one we've we've sort of condensed it so that you can fit either a mounted cultivation 
piece of equipment behind or a combination drill. Right. Um, so to keep the weight from being pushed out too far at the back of the tractor, right. we keep him nice and close coupled. We've got our usual steering legs and right. discs, so everything moves in there. And this one happens to be auto reset as well, so it's for stony conditions. And then with this rear linkage, so you can mount your power harrow on, because of the close coupled element and different manufacturer's fittings, we can actually alter the reach on the linkage itself, so it, move, it can move in and out. So it's extremely versatile. Yeah, you can, the, idea the idea is you can pretty much make it fit any machine you come to. And then that can be either fixed or lifted up and down independently of the tractor linkage on the front. So what width is this actual machine here? So this one's a three metre. Um, it's also got the option to run a power drive through the middle, so if it was a power harrow, right. you can run the shaft. In the, this one's designed to run with two separate shafts, okay. or you can have it without that and run a long shaft straight through straight the middle. Straight through the middle of it. Yeah. Well, what are we talking about in terms of um, hydraulic requirements for this? Because you've got quite a lot going on, don't you? It looks complicated, but it isn't really that complicated. It's got the auto reset, which adds lots of extra pipes, but in actual fact, you charge the auto reset valve, mm -hmm. you set the pressure on the pressure gauge, right. and once you've done that, you can actually uncouple that and, and not touch it again. Um, but that just allows the legs to completely retract if they hit anything. The other hydraulics are really just for passing the power through from the tractor to the implement because the pipes simply aren't long enough uh, when right. you put this in the in the bit in the middle. But obviously to make it just more convenient to finger without messing about exactly. changing pipes. What sort of exactly. uh, what sort of depths, what sort of adjustment do we have here so, in terms of how much it'll work? Depth wise uh, to a maximum of about 300 mil, right. 12 inches, and so you've got you can obviously control the depth of the tractor linkage. That controls how much cut you get with the discs. The, they're a big disc, 500 millimeters diameter. The more cut you get in front of the leg, the less explosion for, as the leg travels through the ground. Right, yep. And also, if there's a lot of trash on the surface, it stops it wrapping around the legs if the disc can cut straight through it. And then the leg follows behind and it just has this simple pin arrangement so we can slide the legs up and down. Right. Now are these these legs unique to this? Are they your design of leg and your design of We use this is a Metcalf leg. Right. And uh, we found it to be it's only 15 millimeters thick. So it it doesn't produce much disturbance. Again, it's all about not not trying to pull up material from underneath. Leave the soil profile as was with the fine material on top that you want and not bring out any of the stones or the heavier soil from underneath that then needs working down again. Uh, so we try and leave all the soil profile the same. All we want to do is fracture it, let the water in and let the roots grow through it, through, through it and, yeah, yeah. and just remove you know combine wheelings with the best will in the world you know in a wet season no one's going to sort of say we won't combine that wheat today because it's the combine's going to make a terrible mess of the soil structure you got to go in do it and then this machine can quite easily remove any of that damage and let the following crop away you heard it here first on land power tv it's been very very nice to meet you sir thank and you very you, much and you know here in yorkshire quality, everything you could ever and want. The sun shining on the righteous. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Cheers, <mate. laughs>and gents now on to the Wharfdale tractor stand who have a fine lineup of Zetters uh, on their uh, on their stand and I'm now joined by the main man himself from Zetter oh, UK oh, oh, oh. Mr Nigel Wilson <laughs> MD who's going to talk us through uh, one or two of the product, products in particular this Proxima so Nigel, what's sort of going on with the Proxima? Because, I mean, for a start off, all the tractors have been facelifted. Yes. There's a few things going on with the Proxima. It's, uh, you know, it's evolving, it's moving on. Indeed it is, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, certainly with the Proxima range, you know, is our most popular range of tractors. Comes in three versions with the, the classic version, the CL versions. This is the GP version, which is a Gear Plus, and the HS version, which is Power Shuttle. Popular, popular tractor. 100, 120 horsepower, as you see this version here, fitted with a track lift loader, really good gutsy tractor and loader, multi-purpose tractor around the farm, good yard tractor, good estate tractor, 
and we're getting quite one or two into municipal uses as well now. Right. And uh, I think that'll further come that we uh, we have several units that we have left in stock at the moment with us that are Zeta engine powered. Right. And, Such as this uh, one. As this one yeah. here. Yes. Yep. Yep. And then uh, we'll be getting the first of the Deutz powered. Right. So you're moving five, on to Deutz. Yep. Right. Tier five uh, versions coming through imminently. In right. fact, they're more or less on the high seas now. And is the move to Deutz mainly to meet emissions and mainly to meet emissions? I think that uh, you know, and, and you know, to develop a new engine now is a major, major thing versus numbers. Yeah. And you know, Deutz being the you know, largest engine manufacturer, you know, in the world, it's the only sense that we move to that. We use the we've used the Deutz engine now for a number of years in the major at the bottom end of the line up there and then we use it in the six cylinder crystal at the top end of the line. So you're no stranger to We're the We're no Deutsch stranger motor. to it and we have absolutely no fault with it whatsoever in that time. And uh, you know a check again, check built loader, uh, great bit of kit, we've sold track lift loaders now, have been associated with Zeta tractors for over 30 years and uh, you know, as well as having loaders for our Zeta range, we also do loaders for many other uh, premium breeds of tractor you know, throughout the UK as well. So we can facilitate, uh, it's quite another uh, you know, big part of our business really. Yeah. And, and again, you know, a tractor and loader like that there, 110 horsepower, you know, change out of 55k and a trading back keeps the, keeps the trading sensible. You know, and uh, so, uh, and for a well-proven product, That's you know, it. heading it's towards our 80th year, <laughs> heading towards That's our it. 80th There's year. There's not a lot of people that don't know that no, name, no, is no, it? No, 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 That's right. That's right. That is a bit like your name. Everybody knows it. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> That's it. There we go. So, uh, yeah. Good stuff. Well, Nigel, I'll leave you with yes. your fine lineup of tractors. Get it. a few more sold and out the door. We'll keep but, attacking it. Yeah. Good to see you as always. Your time. Yep. Spot on. Very good. Agrimac North Limited has been importing the Spanish-built Agrimac rough terrain forklifts into the UK for the last 10 years. I'm now standing with Ricky Parkin, who is a managing director of the company, and he's going to tell us a little bit about what you offer to customers here in Britain. Um, so we offer a full range of services for your forklift trucks, from driver training right up to service repairs, your sales and your hire of not just the Agrimac product, but any manufacturer of forklifts will offer service and repair and training on them. Right, right now. So now you're a distributor, we've established that you're a distributor for Agrimac. Now Agrimac's been building equipment in Spain for since the late 50s, hasn't it? Yeah. So today we've got this Agrimac product here. Tell me a little bit about this machine, you know, what powers it, what you're doing, where it fits in the market. Let's go well, through it. This is our opening product. This is TW12. Well, this particular one, it's two wheel drive, um, is available in four wheel drive. Right. Even the two wheel drive, it's rough terrain um, and will go across most grassland, will go across to its limit, a plough field, as long as it's not too soft. <laughs> um, Cabota three cylinder engine in back of this one. What sort of horsepower? Which it's 18.5 kilowatt right. engine. You've got pop claim hydraulic motor and hydraulic pump to right. drive the system. You're on wheel motors all the way around. Okay. So it gives you say. So it's a pure hydrostatic. So it's it's a, it's hydrostatic pump. So it's driving wheels. It's not yeah. a mechanical drive not, under it at all. Not mechanical drive under it. Hydrostatic to the wheels. So so, it, so this is a two wheel drive. Wheel motors are down there. Yeah. If you have the four wheel drive, it just adds wheel motors so on just the back. Wheel motors on the back. You can actually convert a two wheel drive pretty easy to four wheel drive. Right. Um, you basically so, just buy the hydraulic pumps to bolt onto your. So it's excellent. that easy, you can actually, so you can, if I said to you I bought one and said oh, we really need a four wheel drive, you'll retrofit it for me. Yeah. Coming around the front here, I know obviously stack of trucks, forklifts, whatever you want to call them. This is, is this, is this, uh, this mast here, is this built by Agrimac or they, is this one they buy this, in? This is built by Agrimac and say the full machine is all built by Agrimac, they do a lot of manufacturing them sends. Right. This particular mast, it's a three stage 
triple mast container spec. Right, so uh, how high will it lift? Full free lift. On this one, it's a three metre mast. Right. Um, we oh. can go up to a four metre mast on the 12, but it's got to be a duplex. Right. Um, so it won't be fr full free lift then. Right, now, so what sort, what's the lift capacity on, on, a, on a machine like this? This one, it's... Uh, 1,200 kilograms. That's what the 12 means. Yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, 12 yeah, means. Yeah, yeah. And the machine it's sent only weighs 2,100 kilograms. Right, so it's so quite a light machine. The light machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes it better for going across the land. Um, and then also you can move them about on back of a car trailer. How much bigger do they get than this, or is this like the, the well, biggest you sell, or how, what, where are we going in size wise? The next step up from the TW12 is this one here that's it's your TW16. Uh, so it's 1.6 tonne. Yeah, and, and say they are pretty much the same. Um, you say you've got four cylinder Kubota engine in this one where so a little the 12 bit, had a little bit more power. Yeah, a bit more power, pulling that bit more weight. Um, different tyre specs, as I noticed, this one's got agricultural spec tyres on it, whereas this one's got like, well, dual purpose tyres, really, I suppose yeah, you call them, yeah. Yeah, uh, these are in more general, yeah, rough terrain tyres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got 16 across there, they've got grass tyres on them. Right. Um, if you're doing a lot of, yeah, grass work, and say, a lot of events people tend to you take so, that one because you run across a grass field and they don't want to chew it up. Um. Now, do, do you, I, if I, as I understand it, you have to manufacture the ROPS cage for this, the, the, the cab frame in the UK. Is that built in the UK to suit UK? <laughs> when, when we put cabs on, like that one there's got a glass screen on, canvas top, we manufacture them. Right. We can do them cab with the doors on. Um, that's manufactured by us. And say more, it's more on the older models of the old TH range that we used to do, right? Where we can do a full cab on them, right? Right, right, right. Um, right. These ones are more glass screen and canvas back on them at the moment, yeah. yeah. Well, I have to say, I, I've been quite interested in this because I, I must confess, I didn't really know anything about them at all. So I really do appreciate you giving us a little insight into what you've got going on here, and thank yeah. you very much. Right, ladies and gents, we continue our coverage of the Yams 2023 event, and we are now on the Ceres stand, joined by the man himself, it's Mr. Martin Johnson, who you may have seen in one of our previous videos when we had a good look at your grassland subsoiler, which is still going strong, yep. and you may see it on one or two of our other review videos, because it's hanging off the back of some of the tractors that we've been testing. Anyway, today, it's all about this piece. The was it Unimol? Mole journey. Yep. Yes. Right, so what have we got going on? Because you've got a few really nice, there's some really smart design touches on yep. this from what I can see. Yep, starting at the very front, we have got hard ox pin inserts. Cat 3 and Cat 4 in case you need a bit more power. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> um, also, yeah, hard ox insert at the top. The next key, key and crucial part of it is the hydraulic ram on top. This hydraulic cylinder is mostly in float when you're working so as you go along the field that the, the long beam will follow the ground right over any humps and bumps nice and smoothly but the key feature of it is when you get to the end of the field lift up the headstock will rise up change the angle of the beam so it drives itself out the ground right so as you're lifting up leave it in float yes so it literally just front end pops, pops up, up and it just rides out gently comes out the ground yep which puts a lot less stress on the tractor Anyone who's used a mounted mole drainer or even a trailed one knows how much force there is when you go to pull it out. Mm. You've still got to be travelling forward, the foot's trying to go into the ground, the beam's trying to stay down. If you can tip the whole lot back, it rides out, a lot less stress on the tractor. Yeah. Also, it does the same when you enter the ground, the ram will close up as you know the headstock down, it will drive itself in yeah. to get to its level better, it will dive in better and smoother than a conventional style. Yeah, one of the old key features is the vertical pivot point. 
This allows it to follow you with the springs each side holding it true when you lift out the ground so it will always stay behind you and stops it wagging behind you. This vertical pivot pin will allow it to follow the tractor. So wherever you want to steer, wherever you want to go, mm. it can follow you other than because the amount of leverage on the leg that far back, exactly. normally when you try and steer and correct, the front tractor wheels end up fighting against you. Mm. So you end up losing more traction by having a big four wheel drive tractor because you end up pushing the front wheel sideways up the field. Yeah. Well, this, it will always follow you. Um, even when you turn a bit sharpish out the ground before the foot's cleared, that will allow a certain amount of impact, a certain amount of manoeuvring. And if you ever hit a hard obstacle, the leg can, believe it or not, jump sideways in the ground without putting too much stress right, so on the tractor linkage. Works around, it right. will manoeuvre yeah. around. Also, very good um, at helping with traction because you're going to, no matter if your lift arms are shorter one side the other or your geometry's out in your tractor it will always pull dead even on both lift arms. Yeah. One of the key things with this is it's protecting the tractor. Not only the way it lifts out the ground, but also with the side springs. If you didn't have that, um, you're putting a lot more stress into the headstock, you're putting a lot more stress into the tractor because you'll end up pulling more on one lift arm than the other, which doesn't help your traction, doesn't help the machine, and certainly doesn't do no. your tractor any good. Exactly. The big obvious thing in the middle of the main beam that no one else does is we've got a large disc mounted for cutting crop residue and just to make a tidier job. If you're getting grass or minimal, minimal till or low till situations, that will cut a neat opening for the leg to follow in. Right. So you don't get the soil peel back and the tear from the leg. Um, also any large crop residues, anything that we shouldn't have growing in our fields that we may have, it'll cut <laughs> it cleanly and follow behind. Which is also one of the main reasons for the very large skid. Yeah, that's a fair skid. Yeah, that's designed to spread the surface area of the downpour. So as I was saying, in good conditions, you ride the front about half inch off the ground. That puts the whole downpour and pressure of the whole machine over the rest of the skid. Right. So not only do you get a truer, more even trench going through, it stops as much heave. Then we go back to the leg. Um, yeah, because the full skid is hard ox underneath as well, as well as the leg being hard ox. The whole leg's hard ox. The whole leg yeah. is hard ox, so extremely hard wearing. It has a ransom front shin, same as what most other producers and manufacturers have used over the years on subsoil and other various things. And it's also the ransom moldrainer foot, so it's the four roll pin foot. Right. So that's available anywhere. Yeah. The whole leg design is protected by the shear link. And as I say, this is going back to protecting the tractor linkage again mm. and the tractor. The only reason why we have the shear link is to protect the tractor. Yeah. You don't need to protect the mould drainer. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's not going to break. You're not going to hit anything hard enough. So listen, this link. Yep. Pop. It's a drop-on link. And so that's it. there's plenty of that's up on the headstock. over there. Yep. On so the headstock. Just drop it on. Ready to go. That's it. That'll pre-tension. As soon as it gets load on it, that will stretch and be tight on there. So it won't fall off when you're using it. Um, the whole pitch of the leg is um, altered by the packers at the back. So you control oh, wow. your riding angle on yeah. the packers. There's lots of different size packers that come with the machine. We do something that no one else done, which is something that I'm amazed no one else Another done over thing. the years. Another thing. <laughs> Another thing. Well, it comes back from the simplicity of using them. Yeah. When we used to have the old trailed ones, we also used to run ceramic expanders because they last a lot longer, a lot harder wearing and they wear more evenly and they do, the key thing is they cut, they keep truer. So dragging that through, which forces the ground out from each side to seal the clay. The mm. foot goes through the clay, makes a hole, and then the expander comes through and forces that clay, like moulding a bowl. Mm. Good stuff. Lots of really good little features. Sounds like you've got a lot of experience with mould drainers over oh, yes. the years. <laughs> you found the bits that work and don't work, yes. and you've literally put all the bits that work on this. Yep. It's your dream mould drainer. It's basically what you're selling. Is that what it is? <laughs> I haven't seen anything else better, and I've used a lot of them. There you go. You heard it from the man himself. Martin, thanks very much for your time. Not Spot a problem. No doubt we'll catch up with you again sometime. Somewhere. Probably. Jobs are good then. It's now time for a little bit of insight, specifically in the world of pickup trucks. Now today in the UK there are only three types of pickup trucks you can buy. That's a Ford, that's a Toyota or an Isuzu. 
Now I'm standing next to James Huggins, who's a director of the York Van Centre, which is one of the big distributors for Isuzu pickup trucks here in Yorkshire County. James, Hello. tell us a little bit about what's happening in the pickup market in the UK today. Yeah, well, pickup market is, uh, yeah, like you say, a few of the, few of the other dealer, um, brands have, have dropped out for, for one reason or another. Yeah. So it has a sort of brought demand on ourselves right. um, a lot higher, really. Um, and also being that the um, other, f f f it's one of our main struggles, at the, or has been for, for, with everyone as well, is getting all the components. Yes. So, as, like other manufacturers, have had the same issues. Um, COVID has played a massive part in this, which has been a bit of a burden for us all. But it has made people sort of forward thinking. Now, this people are starting to, um, but order the vehicles in front. But so so, it's, so it's the same ordering. thing that we've seen in every t aspect of the automotive and truck and agriculture is where you just we simply can't get the components to yeah to, to build the machines. Now is, is that changing? Are we starting to see more vehicles it, coming through? I mean, it is changing. Yeah, we do seem to be seeing that we've got um, more vehicles are starting to starting to pending to start to come through. So they're seeing some um, arrival arrival dates being quicker. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed. There'll be no more bumps in the road, but we don't know what's around the corner, do we? I mean, obviously, this stuff in Ukraine and everything has played a part in it, playing it all as well, which is still yeah. obviously ongoing. Yeah. Um, and I know that some some of the countries are still up to full capacity, so hopefully, yeah, we, we're, we're turning a corner. But okay, where are Suzu's concerned, and also the industry to some respect? But what's the trend for trucks now? Are we seeing people buying higher spec trucks? Lower spec trucks. I mean, what is it? An even split? What what's sort of going on in that? Yeah, department? I mean, I would probably say we're selling more higher spec trucks than we well, than we have done previously. Um, so they're sort of going for this V cross model here, yep. or the V cross, or a crossing. We've got the DL40 there, which these guys are in front of. Right. They're the tip. They're the sort of top of the range ones, but. Uh, also, we're sort of fight, still finding there's still a, still a quite quite a captive audience still for the um, utility spec. Bates, Bates which is, you know, pe people don't always need all their fancy extra bits you get on these other ones. In terms of this, now in recent years, I know you know we were talking about this before we went on camera. We've seen it. There's been a trend where you know we've, there's no V6s anymore. That sort of dropped away. It's, it tends to be smaller capacity diesels that we're finding in these. Is, is, is there any benefit to that? I mean, it, 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 you tell me tell me more about what's going on with that. What are we seeing with the, with the introduction of these diesels? Is it more power, better fuel economy? I mean, What's going on? You, you, basically, the predecessor to this was a 2.5. This is now a 1.9 engine. Right. The power output is is the same. Right. So the brake horse power is the same. Basically, they're getting more power of a smaller engine. Yeah. And it's to do with meeting the Euro 6 um, emission standards. So yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. that's what we're, that's the reason behind the Zuzu doing it. Um, and yeah, no, the, the engine seems to be more refined. The fuel economy seems to be um, slightly better than previously, so that's obviously a plus as well. Mm. Um, but it's, you know, basic, it's mainly to meet the emissions. Now, to are they introducing uh, different transmissions to get the best out of the engines? I mean, they've just got the same transmission as the previous model? No, or? it's got. A, this has got a um, six-speed auto box. Right, the right. previous model had a five. Um, and then you've got a six-speed manual box as well. Right. Well, as somebody that's used Isuzu trucks myself in the past, I've always been an Isuzu fan, and I yeah. genuinely have. It's not just because I'm standing next to you, but if they're still built today like they were then... Yeah. What did you, what did you have then? Uh, I've had, I had a um, rodeo pickup. I had uh, one of the best things I ever had. was the Isuzu Trooper. Trooper, yeah, yeah. One. Yeah, yeah. What an old bus that was. She yeah. was a brilliant thing. Absolutely brilliant. I had about 200,000 miles in there. Anyway. Yeah. They don't sell them today. I wish they did. Hey, listen, I Suzu, make a new version of the Trooper. But in that in that respect, we're just going around where we are. Thank you very much. Thank you for talking Thank to you. me today. Yeah, no it's problem been absolutely all. brilliant. And remember, folks, come and see your local I Suzu dealer here in Yorkshire. So, ladies and gents, uh, put it this way: um, I couldn't walk past this. Go down, Case International, 1455XL. It's definitely caught my eye. It's caught many, many people's eyes. And it is on the independent AgriParts stand here at Yams. So go on then, talk us through what have you done to it? What have you, you we, know, the parts that you do and sell, what have you put on this tractor? We obtained an axle casing, put the axle back together, removed the bent up tin work, 
all the fan was smashed radiator, removed all that. We got it on to four wheels to start with to just make sure we were functioning. It did drive, it did have all its gears going out every right which way. Yeah. And we had hydraulics. Through IAP we obtained the rest of the parts. Majority of the parts came from abroad. I have a new bonnet, new mud guards, a four-wheel drive shaft, two diesel tank, steps, side panels, and that front grille. We're not quite finished yet. It's going back home for a few more little right, finishing touches. A little bit working progress. It did, it did what it needed to do here today, but it is going back home to have its air conditioning fitted, the yeah. external hydraulic control, and some finishing touches in the cab. Right. It may get some extra work lengths. Yeah. And in terms of cab interior and cladding and stuff like that, is yeah. it all new or it how far does all, it go? It is all new. That's it. And what's the, what's the pickup hitch on that one? That is a hands engineering hitch. Is that one of your components that you sell, is it? Or? Now I do. I've got now you do? Down. Now I do. It's led <laughs> me, it's led me to... Few doors, it, it? it has opened me some doors, this track, sir. Right. And uh, yeah, anything else sort of on it that's sort of... All new cab glass. All new glass. All new glass. Right. When you take the glass out of a tractor to do it up and you start to clean it and then you suddenly realise somebody's been in the cab with an handle grinder yeah. some years before and has damaged it. Yeah, it's a bit sickening. Yeah. The wheels, yeah, just, just the wheels. The bespoke Local wheels. Yeah. wheels. I tell you what, it's almost sort of like Dutch spec in it. You see a lot of the Dutch slides and got the They big... put 38 inch wheels on a tractor like that. Right, just look at that tractor. You've got 38 inch wheels. Them arches would be empty. Well, but it is for sale. Yeah. It's for sale, is it? it? Right? He's done it up now, sale. now it's for sale. Yes. Right? Yes. There you go. So you want the 1455? It's a 1988 F registered 1455. There you go. 12,000 hours. Job's going. Well, Stephen, we could drill over this. Well, you could well, I'm going to drill a bit longer. We're going to take cameras off. I'm going to carry on drilling <laughs> a bit longer. Uh, it is for sale. And we will look forward to what you're going to bring next year. So, thank you very much for your time. Spot thank on you. that. So some of you in Land Power TV world may have seen a feature we did last year on the Strymec Pro Ag Hopper Bucket. Now the one we featured last year was a pre-production example which was still under evaluation. Well the good news now is that this is now a production model. This is the product that you can buy and here to tell us all about it is Dave Allen from Strymec. Dave, tell me a bit about this. What have you done to it since we last saw it? Well, the first thing you can see, which is the bright top, is we put the rain cover on. Right. So, and the whole concept of this design yep. is to add safety to the industry of agriculture. Yep. So, what, what we now can do is we can, cut, we can take product to a field, fertilise a corn and directly feed a drill. Yep. And we can keep it dry. If we uh, want to put the product inside, you can see inside there's a set of knives just behind the guard. All right. So what you can do is self-empty. So you drop a, a, a large bulk bag of, again, corn or even uh, fertilizer, and it will automatically self-empty without so, the use of a knife right, and right, going right. out the cab. So you're just, you're literally, with your telly hand, you're just lowering it down. The knives will cut the bottom of the bag. Yeah. It comes out, you're not leaning in the bag. You don't lean in the bag, you no, don't lean over the about, bucket. No. You stay in the cab seat safe from the, uh, the danger zone of the uh, operation. Right. Well, that, that's, a, that's a very useful feature. Of course, if you don't want it, you have the option of taking it out, of course. You do, yes. So it's just a bolt-on option. Um, on, go on, sorry, carry on. I was just going to say, you can see now it's on its own stand. So right. with it being on its own stand, you can actually be an owner-operator of one machine and still use this in the field or in the, uh, in, the, in the farmyard safely. So there's a lot of safety aspects designed around this, this concept. So the stand which comes with the bucket, you use this, you put it on like this and you now you can come up, fill the bucket up yourself, yep. take the thing off and then take it down the field and yep. then lift it up and use the hopper bit. Yeah, right? and you're not having in contact with any of the product. Now the, the clever bit about this is of course you've got the, in, the inside of it which tapers down because you've got an outlet. Yes. And the outlet is under here so that's where your product comes out you lift the bucket in the air yeah yes it does pull this pull that yeah, down you, so it you just pull down. the flap down so the reason we put the flap there with a little gold post is it can stay on it's completely safe and out of the way when used as a normal grain bucket in normal bulk grain duties yeah yeah, yeah. but when you want to fill the drill you just take the flap down you can leave the flap down it's a flexible uh, pvc flap again 
and then you would have the spark ready to fill the drills or the um, fertiliser spinners whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, directly. On from and the, off here? That's right, from the cab. So you can see the on and off, you can see as it gradually gets more, you go from feathering it with the proportional controls in the machine to fully uh, opening up the hatch where it's fully open. And that can be, um, be like I say, uh, so that, so it's hydraulically operated and that essentially is just a, a, an indicator to show you how much it's open or closed. So if you've got somebody there, you can say, oh, slow it down, slow it down because the drill's nearly full. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you can also, as you can see the bags on the back that you probably know, you can fill bolt bags with it. Oh, yes, that's right. You've got the bag. I remember that so, now because that's when we saw it being done. When we that's, saw right. It, that's right. So go back to what we've just been talking about. If you want to go to the Weybridge and add another 10 kilograms, you can do that with the feathering of it and just add 10 kilograms more to make sure you give the right or put the right amount in the bag. It's very, it's a very, very impressive device. So essentially, we have a bucket, that, a grain bucket that can be used as a conventional grain bucket for loading a yes, wagon or, or a trailer or whatever you want. Yeah. You've got a bucket that sits on a stand that can be filled by one person independently, whether yeah. you're with seed or fertiliser to put out and about, to, to whether you're filling a drill or doing whatever you're in, in field work. You can hitch it on off the stand with one person involved. Yeah. And then you can actually load and do the drill just with one person from the cab and you can see exactly what you're doing. I think, I think that's got to arguably be one of the most versatile <laughs> bucket designs that. on the planet, bar none. Thank you very much. No, we, we, it, we it were impressed a, when we saw it last year. I mean, it is a versatile tool, um, it adds versatility to the machine so yeah it's uh, great for return on investment and where can you get one of these from mate where would you go to get so one? all the local agricultural dealers in England and Scotland you can uh, uh, buy off Um yes yeah, so you can buy them from them um, information's on our website mm -hmm. so you can see the video on our website right. so yeah all the information is easy to well, get what's with. the website while we're here real quick so the website is www.stramac .co.uk and that's the only free bit of advertising you're going to get today mate thank you very, <laughs> thank you very, very much. much for talking to us thank you and that about wraps that up right ladies and gents to finish off our coverage of yams 2023 we are on the utv product stand which as you might have guessed is famous for its lighting products and I'm with big big boss Ben so big boss Ben is going to talk us through well what you're showing off today obviously lights but the, it looks like there's a massive variety of yeah lights. we've got a huge variety of of LED lights really that yeah. that cater for anything from classic tractors all the way up to brand new machines yeah you know, so you can so, get led lights but have a classic look for those classic tractors yeah right? yeah yeah and and that's the way that we want to do it you know we want something that can that can suit the machine that looks oem that doesn't look out of place that doesn't look garish and it actually works yeah. you know um for us as a motto we we focus on quality premium brands you know premium light the the, the best light output that we can get that, that will go onto that machine and, 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 and look good and give you a very, very decent output. Uh, we focus more on getting the light out at distance as well. So not only are we putting a lot out of the lens, but yeah. we, we tend to find that our lights are six, ten times brighter at five, ten meters. Than, right, so you get a good throw on them. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, and a standard OEM, you know, factory fit tractor manufacturer will fit a certain light if we then compare that to something that we fit it's you know it could be six yeah. ten times brighter that's it. well that's it because they're always doing it to a cost they've got Very a budget so. to work to whereas you guys can come along actually yeah yeah check this one out and and, and that's it you know and a, a lot of our retailers or a lot of distributors now are are offering a lighting package to go on a brand new tractor that will replace every single light on that machine for say for a john deere or a fent or a voucher or whatever you put a full set of lights on there and for instance, you know, a, a, a Vulture light, it's 2,500 lumens as a standard LED light. 
our premium light that we can offer for that is 7,200 lumens. All right. Now that's three times brighter at the lens, but at five meters, it's six times brighter. So there's a considerable ah, uplift in actual yeah. physical light output. And you can see that in the distance that you actually get from the, from the light, yeah. so. And all your lights, are they all LED based or do you do other sort of types? Or? No, we only do LED, LED. And, that, and that's, yeah. And, and as a design manufacturer, we, we, we are designing new lights all the time. So we're upgrading lights. We're constantly rotating lights that are that are getting upgraded from a, a chipset, you know, from a, a driver set. Anything inside there, we can upgrade and just constantly evolving and constantly pushing the boundaries as a business and, and looking at the next technologies that we can start developing into lights and what we can do, you know. And it's it's that constant push and constant drive to to, yeah. to get that sort of out and there. In, in terms of these lights, do you? design all these lights yourself these are your own developed lights most of most the lights of them, yeah. yeah yeah so if we if we sort of move around here these are our new for 2023 lights on this on this stand here this light here is uh, a prototype light that is currently in manufacture so so this light we've designed and engineered all of that ourselves you know so that that will fit into a lot of different lights yeah. you know from from a hella by halogen point of view, that, that will swap into. So, you know, Fent, Valtra, Massey Ferguson, Deutsch Class, JCB, that light there will go in there, you know, and we're looking at about £239 for a pair, which is considerably brighter than an, an LED upgrade from, yeah. a, from a manufacturer. And then the light I was saying to you about the Valtra, you know, this is, this is our brand new light. That's 7,200 lumens. That little base there. Yeah, and, and, and the, 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 the actual lenses that we've created on there it, it has a, a, a very good or efficient way of actually projecting that light, all of that light, out yeah. at a distance. So you're not you're not getting a lot of losses from it. You're not getting right a lot of wash. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's it's putting the light where exactly where you want it. Um, this this here is a, a, another new light for 2023. So this is a chemical resistant light. So a lot of sprayers now are putting uh, pendomethylene uh, pre-emergent sprays through. Uh, their sprays and we we're finding that that as a chemical was eaten into the polycarbonate lenses all right so what we've done is we've designed this new lens now which is a glass lens and it's completely chemical resistant to pendomethylene so yeah. as as a light it's it's now efficient and effective so that it will not be failing or what we were finding is that lights were starting to go brown on the lenses and starting mm. to craze and crack another thing that we found was Cheaper LEDs, you can t you can put them on and turn them on, and they just kill the radio. So one of the things across the board, without fail, you will not get any radio interference on any of these lights. These these are a, a, a very new brand or a very new product to, to to us. It's not something that we make ourselves. It's something that we've um, that we've worked with other companies on. Uh, so this is a, a new range of lighting that we've brought in, um, just just to give. Um, and and a, an additional add-on to to what we already what we already yeah. um, achieve. One, one of the other things that we try to do is everything is plug and play. So if you plug a light in, it will if if it can do, yeah. it will plug straight in. So you're yeah. not having so to such, cut wire in or anything like that. Ultra, it will you plug can straight swap in. That yeah, quick exactly. Interchange. And, and, and that same light, we've designed that same light for a class as well. Mm. So so we've got a different bracket set for a class, so it still works on it. And then in the class have either got a DT connector or H9 connector. So we can we can still plug yeah. that same machine, uh, that light onto that same machine, and there's no there's no um, changing of wiring or, or recrimping wires or anything like that. It just plugs in straight away, and then if you want to sell the machine, you can take the lights off, swap them onto your new machine, and you're away. That's it. And where can people get hold of your lights? Is it direct from you, or do you have dealers, or how does it work? We have quite a large dealership network across the UK, Ireland. We're just moving into Slovenia as well, so that, that we go across uh, Europe. Uh, we have a big distributor in uh, New Zealand that covers New Zealand and, um, and Australia. So for, 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 from, from us, we can di buy direct off the website, give us a call. But more importantly, we have a, a huge network yeah. of dealerships across the UK. Spot on. Well, Ben, we could probably tour your, tour, tour your stand <laughs> for another hour yet because we've got that many products on We've here. got a lot to go through. Well, we've got that a lot is to absolutely go fantastic. Thank yeah. you very much for Thanks your time. For that on. Is Thanks great, for coming that. on. Thanks for coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it from us at uh, Yams 2023. I hope you've enjoyed the coverage as ever. 
Go check out LampowerTV.com for loads more video content on there, loads of episodes, reviews, custom reviews, behind the scenes specials, all kinds of things, and it's dirt cheap to subscribe. You've got no excuses, it's only £30 a year at the moment, unless you're watching this in a few years' time, then it might have gone up. But anyway, we'll cross <laughs> that bridge when we get to come to it. So, yes, go check out LampardTV.com, follow us on that though, YoungTool and Facebook and many other platforms and shenanigans like that, and we'll catch you again next time.